Welcome Octagon Siders. We're going to now dissect what we have just witnessed, starting with that main event and the performance by Alistair Overeem. Defended the chokes, overcame some adversity, but got it done in the end. There were a few times where you saw Olenek go for that wrap and you, you knew that he was looking for the Ezekiel choke, but immediately Overeem's like, ah, ah, no, 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 no. Oh, thank you. Have a knee, have a knee instead. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, really that was good. classic over him right there in the clinch. Devastating knees to the body, the head. He he took some punches, but it always seemed like he was aware of what was going on and out of danger. He got rocked the one time by Olenek with that big overhand right. But other than that, it seemed like he was covering up just fine and waiting for his opportunity to just blast knees. That was definitely the game plan coming into this fight. I love the fact that he came back from adversity and that a little bit. And also how this move to team elevation seems to really be working out for him. The first thing that stood out to me is when I saw him earlier this week doing his, you know, his photography shoots, how lean he was, how, how physically well conditioned he was. And as he was talking, uh, you know, in the build up to this fight and afterwards as well, he was saying how th there's been there's been a slower build up, a more gradual build up. It seems like he's enjoying his training. He's taking his time more. He's working with his coaches individually and adding things to his game. And as you were talking about how much he drills as well. You yeah. can imagine taking that mentality to a place like Elevation with those coaches. Yeah, I think that's a great spot for him. And I, I think that you really saw, not only was he in physically good shape, but the way that he reacted afterwards, that he's ready to, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out and have a couple drinks, but nothing too crazy because the next fight could be right around the corner. So he's, he seems very motivated to be in there and make a run for the top of the division again. And it's quite inspiring to see a man with his level of experience, his age almost as well, with that learning mindset. It's not fixed. He's still going after it and still not necessarily reinventing himself, but changing things up to stay relevant. Yeah, it is great. It's great. I mean, and there are so many young fighters that could learn from that. Yeah. I remember a couple of fights into my UFC career where I was like, oh, I'm kind of bored of drilling now. You know, it's when you see someone that's on their way to 40 years old that's had 100 and something fights that's still focused on drilling it shows you how important it is in training drillers makes killers guys Ooh, skills pay the bills yeah certainly look that way well let's take a look at the heavyweight picture then and Alistair Overeem perhaps didn't gain much ground tonight but he was putting that call out to Volkov a fight that he's obviously prepared for what do you guys think about the heavyweights right now I think it's wide open, and I think we saw three big performances tonight yeah. against guys that could possibly shape the future of the, the heavyweight division. I mean, Overeem is one of the old guard, uh, and we saw that with Olenek as well, but some of the new guys coming through, we saw Pavlovich tonight, we saw Abdurahimov. There are dangerous guys in yeah. this division that have got stopping power, and any one of these matchups could be explosive, it could go either way and any one of these guys could find themselves within reach of a title very soon. Yeah, absolutely, we talked about that all night, how this is one of those divisions where you're just a few big wins away. There's a lot of other divisions where you've got to put in six, seven wins, and not only wins, but look impressive, get finishes. But with the heavyweights, you go in there, you get a couple big knockouts, you get yourself out there, and you could be the next big thing. And for Overeem, I think that Volkov fight, I think that's a smart thing. Let him get healthy, that's a big name, that's somebody that's been up there in the rankings and yeah. if he takes him out another huge tall heavyweight I think that puts him right back in line to get himself back towards a title shot and he's making a name for himself in Russia as well I yeah. mean he had a really good reaction tonight it, and he also showed up when Volkov didn't and called him out that's a big statement so now to say hey come on Volkov let's do this in Russia absolutely that's a yeah. big call out and a great fight yeah I'd watch it for sure all right well let's move down to the co-main event what a matchup that was one of the most technical fights I think I've been octagon side for. Loved absolutely every exchange. And it just reinforced for me how good Islam Makhachev really is. It, it did, but at the same time, I still feel like it highlighted a potential other contender absolutely. in this division. 22 years old. Unbelievable. I mean, you know, he's, he's 13 and two now, but one of his losses is to Makhachev. That's no shame in that. And he gave a great account of himself. Good wrestling exchanges, always working back to his feet in that single leg position. We didn't see a, many of his spinning kicks tonight, given the fact that he was fighting a southpaw. But you think if we see him rolling out next against an orthodox fighter, we're going to see some chainsaw Charles McCarthy oh. spinning back kicks to the ribs, right? <laughs> Absolutely, you're going to see that. But for Islam, this was a dominant performance. It was back and forth, but he was able to get all those takedowns. And I think we're talking about how close it was because it was a debut, it was a young guy, so we were so impressed. But I think we got to also sit back and think of how good Islam's wrestling was in there oh, too. He yeah. did get four of the takedowns, 
to his only one. And, you know, his stand-up, he didn't get to really let it go too much, but he was throwing more kicks than I anticipated as well. And I just think he's one of those guys, his wrestling is so hard to deal with. He's going to be a real problem. I'm watching him, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm in the same division, <laughs> so I know me and all the other guys are watching him because we got him and we got Habib. So it's like, oh, God, which way do you want to go with <laughs> these guys? You know, they're so dangerous. Once they get you down, we talked about their hips all night. Once they put pressure on you, it's just so hard to get back up. There's no submitting them almost. You know, you yeah. got to really just try to get back to your feet and hope that you can land a significant strike on them. Uh, and, and you could kind of tell that he was surprised by the uh, the abilities of Sorokian. I, I kind of felt like that limited Makashev's game in every other range because every time he stepped forward on that lead leg, Sorokian was level changing yeah. underneath. So. I think there was a surprise element for Makachev tonight who, you know, he managed to come through it still, solve all the problems in front of him and come out with a unanimous decision. Yeah, but were you mentioning the top flights of the lightweight division? Where would you put Makachev now? I mean, he wasn't fighting anyone who was ranked tonight. It was a newcomer, a very big risk. Yeah. But you've obviously got your finger you match him against who do you think might take that one well i think you know i start looking at the, the guys that are maybe just out of the top 10 in like the 12 13 range or even the number 15 guy i think that somebody that's a really good jujitsu player would be interesting to see him matched up and he might already be matched up but i'm thinking somebody like charles Oliveira, who's not as physically strong and doesn't have necessarily the wrestling caliber that makashev has but he does have very good kickboxing and muay thai he's dangerous with his knees and when he gets to the mat, it doesn't matter if you take that man down. Go ahead. He'll throw yeah. up 14 different submissions from every different one of those positions that we saw tonight. He's not trying to get back up, get an underhook, and get back up to his feet. He's trying to wrangle you up, get a hold of your neck, and squeeze you. Yeah, I, I agree. And you've kind of got to look at the skill set that he's got and try and find someone that fits well with that, that can cause him problems. I, I You know, the first person I always say when I'm talking about Khabib is just in Gaethje. I feel mm. like he's got the right style to cause Khabib some problems. So, I mean, I know it's a jump up the card, but uh, maybe that's a good opportunity for him. Coming off a co-main event win, steps up and faces just in Gaethje, and, you know, see how that goes. I mean, that's, that's a skyrocket straight to the top of the division, but I would certainly like to watch. Yeah, yeah, well, that could be in his future indeed. But let's talk about perhaps someone else that's really impressed you. There are a lot of standout performers tonight. Dan, starting with you, who are you thinking of right now? The first one that comes to mind is uh, Mikhail Shejuk. Yeah. You know, he knew he was going to be under pressure against Antigolov. Antigolov 15 and two in the first round. He comes out bowling forward, throwing everything he can at his opponent. And what we saw from Oleg Shejuk was calm, present, accurate striking. He saw his opportunities, he caught him with the left hook, he backed up, created space. I mean, it was almost like he was fighting a zombie. Every time Antigolov was put down, he just was straight right back, back to his feet, just coming forward. But the timing on the uppercuts was absolute gold. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, but Dan, one more about that, because I think when we first saw him, we thought he might be a middleweight. Is he proving us very, very wrong that he's here to stay at 205? You know, punching power is the leveler. And I would say possibly, you know, if you look at the Jotko fight, I would say that that's an opportunity where, uh, you know, a, a fighter could move down a weight class and really benefit from being a welterweight. I mean, you know, uh, um, Jotko's opponent was a power puncher, much like uh, Oleg Shejuk, mm. but he just wasn't able to get up off his back. And if anyone's going to beat Oleg Shejuk, it's going to be someone that can take him down and control him yeah. and make him feel like a small fighter in that division. But while ever he's knocking people out like that, Stay. and guys like John Vellante as well, yeah. you know, with a body shot, I think he's, uh, I think he's in the right weight class until we're proven wrong. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Paul, same to you. Who was your standout performer? For me, it was Shamil uh, Abdurahimov. I thought his boxing, his aggressiveness, he looked calm, collected. He looked like he was really hunting the finish the whole time, felt comfortable in the pocket, got hit with some things, and countered back beautifully. He went to the body as well as the head, and he put combinations together. I've seen him fight where it was a little lackluster before, and you started maybe doubting him in the heavyweight division, but tonight he showed up and he put on a party. By the way, I also want to clarify your question earlier, John. I thought you were talking about who's next for Islam. Not Habib. 
Who yes. are you talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, I was. no, no. I, I, All right. that, that was me Just, confusing you. Okay. No, what I was All saying right. is that um, uh, uh, Gaethje's got a very good style to, to beat Khabib. But yes. obviously, with Makachev being the same camp, a very similar style. All right. I thought I just threw Oliver <laughs> in there against Khabib. Sorry, guys. It's easy to confuse. We have to forgive him. It's been yeah. a long night. It has been a long night. It's been a fantastic night. Some great action. Really enjoyed our time here. And the UFC will, of course, be back in Florida next week. Thanks for tuning in.